Welcome to Sportsbeat KC, the Kansas City Stars daily sports podcast. It's Thursday, May 6th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. So, Kansas has a new football coach, the fifth in the last dozen seasons. That's if you don't count interim coach Clint Bowen. He finished out a year for Charlie Weiss. Lance Leipold is the choice. He spent the previous six seasons at the University of Buffalo, and he won six NCAA Division III championships at Wisconsin Whitewater, his alma mater. He played quarterback there. At KU, he's got his work cut out for him. The Jayhawks haven't won more than three games in a season since 2009. That was Mark Mangino's final year. They haven't won more than one Big 12 game in any of those years, and they've won a total of six Big 12 games in the past 11 years. Leipold signed a six-year deal worth $16.5 million, and that's a nice bump from Buffalo, where he earned about $625,000 annually. Still, Leipold enters the Big 12 coaching ranks as the lowest paid among the 10 football coaches. We're going to hear from Leipold in a few minutes, his thoughts from the introductory news conference in Lawrence last week, but I wanted to share some of my thoughts first. At first glance, this looks like a sensible hire, and I don't mean that in a dismissive way, more like a compliment. Kansas hasn't gone this route in a while. Let's look back at the last few hires. Turner Gill replaced Mangino, and that was a shift in approach. Then Athletic Director Lou Perkins didn't believe he could continue with the hard-nosed ways of Mangino, and Gill, the former Nebraska star quarterback, was the response. Gill, who by the way came to Kansas from Buffalo, wasn't suited for the job. His second team went 0-9 in the Big 12, and then he was fired by KU's new Athletic Director, Shane Zinger. Enter Charlie Weiss. Big name, Super Bowl winning offensive coordinator with the Patriots and Tom Brady, Notre Dame head coach, and even a local tie. He'd been the Chiefs offensive coordinator under Todd Haley in a playoff season with Matt Castle. But Charlie Weiss went 1 and 18 in Big 12 games over two and a quarter seasons, and Clint Bowen finished that year as the interim head coach. Next, Kansas went the opposite of Big Splash by hiring David Beatty. He had been an assistant at KU under Mangino and was hired from Texas A&M, where he was a wide receivers coach. Beatty hadn't been a head coach, but what he lacked in experience, he was going to bring in recruiting chops, especially in his home state of Texas, but it never paid off. And Beatty was fired by new athletic director Jeff Long. Beatty lasted four seasons. Well, another big splash hire came next. Les Miles, who'd won the national championship, a national championship at LSU, and was a longtime acquaintance of Long, got the job. This one didn't work out either, on the field or off. Miles was caught up in allegations of misconduct at LSU through some recent reporting, and he and Jeff Long were gone in March. So that's the Cliff Notes version of recent failed football at KU, and none of this should matter to Leipold, but You don't go through a decade plus of that kind of losing and drama and expect to change things in one season. I think by year three, we'll know if Leipold can get the job done. And what does that even mean at Kansas, getting the job done? Well, let's start with no goose eggs in league play. (laughs) Win a Big 12 game, maybe more than one. It also means handling the lower level non-conference opponents It means playing competitively with programs with similar budgets and ambitions, and it means not getting blown out by anybody. Do that, and maybe there's a bowl season in the near future. Kansas doesn't have to look far to see where football success has occurred at similar Big 12 programs, similar in size and scope. Kansas State is the closest example. Iowa State's next. When it comes to KU and K-State, I I think it's the first time in a while, maybe since Bill Snyder and Glenn Mason, that the coaching matchup in the Sunflower Showdown isn't one-sided. Chris Kleiman and Lance Leipold can win football games. They've both won multiple NCAA titles. Maybe some competitiveness can return to that rivalry. Okay, let's hear from Lance Leipold. These are going to be the highlights from his news conference. And then after that... You will hear from KU beat writer Gary Bedore. He attended the news conference and also the Kansas Spring game, which happened the next day. And, of course, we cannot 
have a conversation with Gary without talking KU hoops. So we'll do that as well. But first, here is Lance Leipold. If words could really express in any way, shape, or form how truly humbled and honored I am to have this opportunity. Um, to stand in front of you today, you know, people ask sometimes what your dream job or where you think you're going. You know, when you're a small town guy in the Midwest that, that uh, plays Division Three football, you know, you, you just, it, it's going to be very similar how we do things here is that it's a day at a time. You know, you, you know, dreams are one thing and, and reality is another. And uh, somehow those two have uh, meshed here today. The goal is to win championships, pure and simple one day at a time. Become a consistent winner. Attention to detail. Do it with great energy, passion, and effort. When people say success, it's going to be daily improvement. What we're going to focus on, you, again, we, we want to stay in the moment. Again, I've mentioned my wife here, as she always, as even went through this process, we, we're, we're going to talk about with our players and you know, be where your feet are at. And, and we got to be able to find ways to get better here today. And, and that'll translate when, when we continue to go through the daily process of improvement and, and establishing what we want to be, the wins and losses are going to take care of themselves. This is a unique situation. We all know that. Timing is not, is definitely different than what is the norm. But, uh, um, and as we get ready to work with these young men, those things will start taking place. And I'm very confident that you're going to see consistency and improvement throughout the season. You know, in fact, I had a couple people that I'm close to and, and things like that. They said, this job fits you. <clears throat> and, I, and I felt it on many different levels. Um, I, you know, I don't know if you sell things in these things. You got to, you know, I've. I don't know if I'm overly flashy in a lot of different ways. I just believe that, that your work and, and your production and, and who you surround yourself with and, and, and 30 plus years in this profession kind of builds your daily resume. And uh, I think when you look at it, uh, that those were the things that I think became important. My desire about what we've been able to do, especially at, this, at, at the last stop at Buffalo, was, um, you know, build a program, sustain winning. Um, you know, I don't know if we, I never even asked the question where we compare in certain areas, whether it be financially or resources or buildings, and, and that doesn't matter. We're gonna control what we can, but in the Mid-American Conference when we got to Buffalo, we were probably in the bottom 25% in a lot of areas. But we didn't worry about that. We worried about what we could do, and we were able to do that. And I feel that a lot of those things are going to transfer what we can do here. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners. Unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 bucks unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important please visit kansascity.com slash offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Okay, you just heard from Lance Leipold, the new KU football coach. And now we're going to talk with someone who was at the press conference. Gary Bedore, the beat writer for the Kansas City Star, covers Kansas and has covered Kansas for a long time. And Gary, I'm thinking that wasn't your first KU football introductory press conference <laughs> for, no, for a new coach. No, I've been to most of them lately, and they've had too many for their tastes because they've gone through a lot of football coaches the last 10 years or so. Gosh, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, well, ever since the, the end of the Mark Mangino tenure, to go from what Turner Gill to Charlie Weiss, um, Clint Bowen in there for a, you know, for an interim, uh, stint. 
course, uh, David Beatty. David Beatty and, and, of course, Les Miles. And now Lance Leipold is, is the guy. What, what did you make of his his comments and his demeanor at, at the news conference. It seemed pretty low key to me. Yeah, he was, um, in charge, you know, he just came in and, uh, talked about, you know, no quick fixes, but said all the, the right things that a veteran, you know, commanding guy would say, I think, he's got the resume that everybody seems unanimously thinking that Kansas picked the right guy because he was at a division three school, but dominated there. They hardly ever lost a game, won six national titles. Then he goes to Buffalo. And after a lousy second year, the first year they almost went 500, I think. Then they were two and 10. Then they go to three bowl games, and now uh, it's time to move up to the Big 12 and see what he can do at Kansas. But he just seemed to be a a calm leader type guy who answered all the questions. No flash, but I think KU fans probably like that right now. It's just here he is. He's got the resume. He seems to be an intelligent guy. Let's see what he can do. So I thought he did fine at the presser. I thought Sam Mellinger wrote a a really good column, and uh, I'd encourage people to read that. Yeah, we're going to link to that um, in the the show notes here. So Travis Goff has his guy. It's Lance Leipold, and we'll we'll see what happens. I Gary, I, I, you're probably like me. It's going to take a little while to get it ramped up at Kansas. It's taken forever for the program to have, you know, a season that you could call marginally successful. But I mean, it, whenever there's a coaching transition, it just takes a while. And and he's inheriting an 0 and 9 team. And who, who knows how many players stay? How many decide to transfer? It's easy to leave a program yeah. now, just as, just as it is easy to you know to enter a program. Yeah, there hasn't been a radical uh, rush of people entering the portal, which is probably good. He asked the players to give them a chance, and maybe they are. You know, maybe they're going to meet with him. Well, they are all going to meet with him and see what he has to say because they do have, like Lance Leipold knows, a, several good young players that are projected to be good contributors at this level. So he can't afford to lose 10 to 12 guys in an emotional response. He needs to keep those good players. And I don't know about, I think a couple of recruits have already decommitted from the following class of 22, but they've got plenty of time to, to recruit guys they want, I think. Right. for that. So, so far, no mass exodus or exodus of, of much any kind. He still got to finalize his coaching staff. And some of those players <clears throat> are probably close to their position coaches. So that could be a factor for a few of the guys. Yeah. It has been a um, tumultuous, you know, end of last season until now for, for the Kansas football program. And, Players have, you know, had to had to deal with the, you know, the firing of Les Miles and the athletic director Jeff Long, the hiring of Travis Goff, and now the hiring of Lance Leipold. Yeah. Hey, uh, did you uh, did, did you get out to the spring game? Yeah, I did get to the spring game, um, and it was interesting. They they have a team that. Uh, has a good, <clears throat> a really good defensive line and pretty good defense projected on the whole. Uh, still a little weak at linebacker, apparently. A couple of really good defensive backs. But uh, I keep thinking about what David Lawrence, a former lineman at KU offensive lineman, he thinks that this defensive line may be one of the best uh, in KU history. <laughs> Um, battling the one with Stubblefield and those guys. 
Yes. So Gilbert Brown uh, on that one too. Remember that? Yeah. But uh, the defense sort of dominated the thing. Um, Jalen Daniels at Miles Kendrick, in my eyes, did not have a good day, uh, which is interesting because Leipold has some talent, but apparently quarterback, you know, unless Jalen Daniels blossoms this summer, which he could, he's got a lot of talent. And the guy coming in, Bean, uh, might be in the mix. You don't want to be weak at quarterback when you're trying to to stop this losing streak. So that's interesting. They the receivers didn't do much, but the tight ends did. They got a good group of those guys and running backs with High Shaw and a couple other guys. They looked um, like they have a chance. So. Leipold has some talent again, but I don't know about quarterback. Yeah, that is that is a mystery. Um, you mentioned the tight ends. I know Will Huggins had uh, was stood out according to the reports. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess if you're a Kansas fan, maybe one thing you can kind of hit you, you know, some fortunes to is Leipold is a former quarterback. You know, that's that that was his position, and I heard this during the week that when he was at Wisconsin Whitewater, he, as you, as you mentioned, Gary, he won six NCAA championships and he did it with five different quarterbacks. So wow. at least that's, you know, that, that gives you some hope that he can, you know, re- identify and, uh, and develop a, a quarterback. And. Yeah. And I would think um, he would, I think he can coach these guys up and I did not know that about him being a quarterback, but that's, that's big because I'm sure he he knows exactly what he – well, we know he knows what he wants, and uh, I think he can – he's a smart enough guy probably to not not have these guys do things that they can't do. So I think KU fans are pretty confident that they have a guy who is a great a good football mind and will know – they kind of trust him, even though they don't know him, I think, after, you know, all the things that have been going on in football. Yeah, for sure. So it was, a, it was an odd time, right, because you had the introductory news conference on Friday and then the spring game was the next day with Emma Jones, the interim coach. Um, so uh, interesting times for for Kansas football. But let's, yeah. let's talk a little hoops, Gary, because you – that is your forte, and there was some uh, some news recently about a prospect, Ty Ty Washington, the point guard, who's one of the yeah. nation's top prospects. Bring us up to date on uh, on Ty Ty Washington. Well, he will choose between six schools on the fifteenth. Uh, he hasn't really said if anybody's leading or anything. A lot of people think he he could be Kentucky's next point guard because Kentucky needs one and that has to be enticing to him, but he's from Arizona and Arizona has the new coach from Gonzaga, the former associate coach there. And I was reading that Ty Ty said they talk twice a day. So he has to uh, be thinking about staying in Arizona with the beautiful well, not beautiful, but the good weather and all that. And uh, Kansas, he keeps using the quote that Bill Self said he he'll get, he's going to give him the keys to the car to run the program to run the team. So uh, I think the experts are not expecting a KU commitment from him, but uh, KU is after, or at least recruiting the former Georgia point guard and uh, you may have seen that guy play uh he was all league i think in the in the sec um was trying to remember his name but uh ty ty the former jo- oh so severe wheeler so, yeah severe wheeler as yeah a strange first now he game. averaged almost eight assists a game is he really good blair he was good he's a good playmaker um n- not a uh, not not a great offensive player but a, but a but a good 
but a good playmaker. Um, he, um, you know, he, he, he declared for the draft and, ah. entered, and entered the portal. So, um, you know, you obviously, a lot of people did that. And so he's one of, you know, he's one of a couple thousand in, in the portal. You know, he's, an yeah. he'd be an experienced guy. He was second team all SEC this year. And, um, he, he's noticeable. I mean, he, he was noticeable. Uh, um, yeah, I hear George they have Litton. a good shot in him if well, Ty Ty if Ty Ty doesn't come. You think that's the, the the backup plan if they don't get Ty Ty? Yeah, if the timing works out, because you know how those are. What if what if Severe Wheeler wants to decide right now or something? So that all gets tricky. And uh, but I think Ku is right in the mix. He's from Houston originally, and Ku's had some luck getting guys from Texas. Yeah, uh, led Georgia with 14, 14 points a game and led the SEC with one hundred and ninety three assists last year. So, um, a, a, a would be a solid addition to yeah to, to the roster. Hey, let's let's take a look at a a, a twenty two prospect, Chris Livingston. Um, tell us about him, and he's the Akron kid, right? Yeah, he's ranked third in the country by rivals. Um, supposed to vie for the top spot. But uh, everybody thinks he might go straight to the pros. So uh, that's that's something. And we always hear about that rule might change back to letting guys go. But um, there's a lot of pro options now with the G League. And I did not hear much about this new league for high school players. Have you heard about that? There's going to be 30 high school players is what they want to join this team that will play prep schools and stuff. And it's got some good sponsors and the players will make a hundred grand a year. So uh, it hasn't gotten a lot of pub yet, but that will be another option for the top, top preps. But uh, if he doesn't go pro Livingston, KU has a shot at him. Definitely. And uh, they're always in on so many guys. It's funny. He doesn't always get them, but they're always in on, on the top guys. Yep. And well, so much so that um, the uh, sort of the the way too early top twenty five rankings for next season are out, and this this the twenty one class has vaulted Kansas into some people's preseason top ten, hasn't it? Yeah, they're ranked sixth in the recruiting class by ESPN, I think it was, and um, they're bringing in seven guys so far with more possibly coming back. If Ochai and Jalen Wilson were to stay in the draft, they would only be returning three guys, I believe it is, count or maybe four counting Mitch. So it's crazy uh, how basketball is going to be changing, it looks like, with guys transferring like crazy. Almost every team is – bringing in a ton of players and losing a ton of players off the portal. KU's bringing in two and have lost five, but some of the guys they've lost, you know, I don't, I don't think had minutes in their future for KU. So right, the portal is, is really changing hoops. It is. And of course the, the two newcomers, uh, Joseph Yesifu, right. And then, yeah. and then Cam Martin are the two. Yep. Newcomers. So far too. Okay, and w- what's the timetable on on Ochai and Jalen Wilson to to make their their call? It got changed this year, I guess, and it's early July. So, uh, man, the seventh or something. So they could they could play with the guys this summer. They all report about the first June sixth or seventh for summer school, and. Ochai and Wilson uh, will either be doing the NBA workout thing or or probably spending some time here. But uh, that month will be really important this year because Bill has so many new players. 
at both inside players, uh, point guard types, and uh, not as many shooting guards, I guess. Ochai and Christian Brown and Jalen Wilson. So he they need to play a lot of pickup ball this year. Through the COVID year, they the offense was – some games they really clicked, but some games, as you know, they, couldn't bar- they could barely score 20 points and a half, and they need to just get up, get out among themselves and get develop that way as much as being coached, I think. They need to play pickup ball and, and try to get some smoothness in that offense, which at times was really, really bad this year. I think the one of the best examples was one of the, the, the last one, the the Southern Cal game in the NCAA tournament. That was that was a disaster offensive on both ends, but especially an offense. So yeah, and the Jekyll Hyde thing, the the game before they got they scored ninety some points against Eastern Washington, I think. Yep. So it was crazy. So many games where they struggled to score twenty and a half, and then other games. How'd they score? You know, you'd be going, how'd they score 95 tonight? But <laughs> but I think the whole year was affected a little bit by COVID. No doubt about it. Absolutely. All right, Gary, great catching up with you. And, you know, because because of uh, the, 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 the changing nature of the calendar, uh, it's never not college basketball season or college sports season for that matter. So, yeah. Um, yeah, don't don't think you're getting a summer break from from me in this podcast. We'll be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just hope they have the summer camps and stuff, Bill Self, so we can go up there and uh, watch some of these guys. Yeah, that would be good. All right, Gary, great talking to you. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, boy. That'll do it for today. Thanks to our Sports Beat KC production staff of Derek Donovan, Beth Welsh. Monty Davis, Jeff Rosen, Chris Fickett, and Savannah Smith. Tip of the cap to Gary Bedore for stopping by and talking Kansas football and basketball. Links to stories about the Lance Leipold hiring and KU Hoops can be found in the show notes and on KansasCity.com. Hey, we've got another deal for you. You can subscribe to Sports Pass for 99 cents a month. That's right, 99 pennies a month. Sports Pass is the online version of the Star Sports section. You get all the stories that appear in the print editions of the Star, plus many more stories that appear only on the website. And they certainly appear first on the website, those stories that appear in the print editions. Okay, after three months, it auto renews at $5.99 a month, unless you cancel. It's always a great time to subscribe. The Royals, I know they've cooled off a little bit, but um, still, what a great start for the Royals. Local colleges are always making news, as we learned today on the podcast. And, of course, it is never not chief season. So how do you get this deal? You go to kansascity.com slash sportspass2020. That is kansascity.com slash sportspass2020. Do you want more than just sports coverage? Check out the entire Kansas City Star product. Sports news features, commentary, and analysis, the whole thing. You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional national news, sports, and business coverage with the E-Edition. The details for all of these deals can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And if you're having trouble hunting down any of those offers, you send me an email, bkirkhoff at kcstar.com, and we will get you to the right place. So, Whether it's the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're getting and supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports BKC. Thanks for listening. We'll be back on Friday, of course we will, with another episode.